Now the devil knows if he can get you not to believe some of God's word, then you can not have faith in a lot of other things in God's word. Well, if, if part of God's word is not true, then this other part might not be true. Maybe God doesn't heal people anymore. Maybe God doesn't do these miracles anymore that he did back then. You know, God has always provided healing for his people. Jesus said that deliverance was the children's bearing. Was the children's bread? In other words, it belongs to the children of God. Say, I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. We need to believe these things. If God has ever done a thing for a person, He always will do the same thing for a person. Why? Because God's no respecter of persons, and God never, ever has changed. In other words, God cannot lie. Say, God cannot lie. God cannot lie. Now, the book of Genesis is a book that God gave to Moses, and Moses wrote it down just like God told him. Turn me to uh, Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 3, 2 Timothy chapter 3, start with verse 14. A couple of weeks ago I gave a ride to a man, he was a Jewish guy, and uh, I started talking to him about our church and stuff, and, and, uh, he, and I told him, he said, what do you believe, and so I started telling him, and and then he was shocked that we believe in the Old Testament. We, he said, you mean you, you teach out of the Old Testament? I said, well, yeah, we do. He said, I thought you just taught out of the New Testament. And I, and I thought, well, well the, Old Te the New Testament is about the Old Testament. You know? so, so anyhow, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 14 through 17 and this is the Apostle Paul talking to Timothy. He was a leader in the church. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of knowing of whom thou hast learned them. In other words, we should know who we're learning stuff from. And that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures. Say Holy Scriptures. Holy Scriptures. Which are able to make thee wise unto salvation, which is deliverance, through faith, in, which is in Jesus Christ. That's why we can get delivered by faith in Jesus Christ, what he did for us. Then verse 16, all, say all. all. And this word all, it's Greek word pass. It's Greek word uh, pass. It means every single one. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. That inspiration of God is a Greek word that literally means God breathed. In other words, God breathed his word to people that spoke it as God breathed it to, to them. So when God breathed and they wrote down the scriptures, it was God breathed. In other words, God, God breathed those words. In other words, these words are the words of God that yes. he breathed. Yes, the word of God. So when you read the word of God, those are God's words. That's God speaking to you. And God will speak to you by the Holy Spirit too. And we should walk in the Holy Spirit, be led by the Holy Spirit but it will always line up with the Word of God. Peter said, he said, On the holy mount, we heard God speak out of heaven and say, This is my beloved Son in whom I'm well pleased. He said, We heard that with our ears. Now, that's a pretty big deal, right? Yep. I've never heard God speak with my ears anything. But he spoke to my heart real clear. That's usually how God speaks to us. The Bible talks about uh, Elijah, Elijah how he went out and he went into a cave to hear from God. And there was a big storm and there was big lightning. And there was an earthquake. It says, and God was not in the storm. God was not in the lightning. And God was not in the earthquake. There was a fire, but God was not in the fire. And he got quiet before the Lord. And then the God spoke to him in a still, small voice. That's usually how God talks to us, in a still, small voice. But if we'll listen, it'll be clear. Yes. But we'll seek God. How long do you seek Him? Until you get an answer. Amen. When we get, when we get desperate, we seek God with all our heart. God knows our hearts. And God will speak to us. Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. And another they will not follow. So we can hear from God by the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, when I send the Holy Ghost, He will teach you all things. And He will reprove this world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. He'll show you things to come even. So the Holy Spirit is there to lead us, to guide us, to direct us, and to teach us. 
Say, teach me. Teach me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable. Say profitable. Profitable. For doctrine, that means teaching. For reproof, that means no, 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 no. I've had people say, well, I read the Bible, but I don't like some of the things it says. Well, that's what it's there for. People get mad at me, so I only preach the word, you know. People get mad at me at some of the stuff I say. They say, he said that. Well, I didn't say that. God said that, you know. Right. I'm one preaching the word of God. I had a, I had a minister call me up and he said, he said we're, we're, we, we're back then, we were doing like Sunday through Sunday services. And we were doing revivals like that, Sunday through Sunday. And, and he didn't like some of the things that I've been preaching. And, and so, so I said, well, let me ask you this. I said, tell me one thing that I preached that was not the Word of God. Because that's all I preach is the Word of God, you know. So, he's, And he was quiet for quite a while. And he said, well, there's nothing you said that wasn't the Word of God. And I said, do you want me to compromise the Word of God? I said, I will not compromise the Word of God. We need to stand firm on the Word of God. Amen. The Word of God is truth. Hallelujah. Don't let anything pull you away from the truth of the Word of God. All Scripture has been given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction. I mean, sometimes we need to get corrected. What? When we get in error. Well, we don't ever recognize we're in error, right? Well, the Holy Spirit is trying to convince yes. you that you're in error. Amen. The Holy Spirit has done the world to reprove the world, to convict the world. Now, there's preachers that will tell you, don't feel guilty when you're doing something evil. No, because that's just the devil trying to make you feel guilty. That's not the devil trying. The devil don't try to make you feel guilty for doing something evil. He's trying to get you to do something evil and make you feel good about it. The Holy Spirit is who, who is convicting you of doing evil things. That's God. Don't say that God is the devil. You're in danger to be doing that. People, the Pharisees, they were saying, they were saying the miracles Jesus were performing were by the power of Satan. And Jesus said, you are blaspheming the Holy Ghost. You're being doing, and he said, you can't be forgiven if you're doing those kind of things. We, we need to be ought to be understanding that it's God that reproves us of sin. If you're doing something wrong, you should feel guilty. That's the Holy Ghost telling you, don't do that. Yeah. Don't do that. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. And for instruction in righteousness, that means teaching you how to live right. That the man of God or the person of God may be perfect. Say perfect. 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 Per, say perfect. 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 Now God wants me to be perfect. Yes. Amen. Through the word. Now that means grow up spiritually. Amen. Be more mature spiritually. Yes. That's what it means. To be perfect. Thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Say good works. Good works. Good works. works. Say good works. Good, good works. works. In Hebrews chapter 10 it says... That we should not forsake the siblings of ourselves together as the manner of some is. We should encourage one another to good works. Amen. And the next verse says, For if we sin willfully, choose to sin willfully after we've come to the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth therefore no more sacrifice for our sins. In other words, if I decide to go have an, adulter an adulterous relationship, and I know better with knowledge. I mean, I know better than that. If I decide to do that, the sacrifice Christ provided for me no longer remains on my life. Yes. But I can still truly repent from my heart, and God will forgive me, but my wife probably won't. And that's okay. <laughs> she shouldn't. Because that's an evil thing. I, I betrayed her trust. I would betray her trust. And the Bible says that's ju just cause for divorce. Jesus said that. That that's just cause for divorce. If you have a spouse that that commits fornication or adultery. That's just cause for divorce. I had a man that he had, he had committed adultery on his wife, and he'd come to our church, and his wife was divorcing him, and he was upset, and then he got to reading the Bible, and he said, you know, I read the Bible. She really does have grounds for divorce. I said, no kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, glory. Thank you, Father. I want to look one more place. Look with me over to uh, 
Thank you, Father. Look at me over to 1 Timothy, chapter 1. Thank you, Father. 1 Timothy, chapter 1. Verses 11 through 21. Thank you, Father. What did you say? First Timothy chapter 1, verses 11. First Timothy chapter 6, excuse me. Oh, 6. Now we can do it. Okay. <clears throat> 